Well, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, my name's David Pearson. I'm the Executive Director of the Don Dunstan Foundation. Um, today has been organised uh, in partnership with the Institute of Public Administration. So I'd like to start by thanking IPA for the work that they've done in getting us here today and to acknowledge all of their members, the Senior Management Council members and all members of the public sector here, and also to acknowledge their partners, IPA's partners, this PwC, Warman's Lawyers and Flinders University. Um, can I also acknowledge today that we are uh, partly all here because of the partners in the social capital residencies as well. And a number of those partners have supported today's event and to acknowledge them is the Committee for Adelaide and Community Living Australia. Um, but to start us off, I would like to um, have a welcome to country. And so uh, it's great pleasure that I invite uh, Tegan O'Brien to provide a welcome to country for us today. So Tegan, please join us on stage. Namani, Nainari Tegan. Madawachanga, Ganamiana, Naiwangandi, Mani Naputni Gana Yatana, Nature Yakanyandalia, Yungandalia, Padlialu Wadu. Ladies and gentlemen, hello. My name is Tegan. On behalf of the Ghana people, I'd like to welcome you to Ghana country. Let's walk together in harmony. Thank you. Alison said to me recently that innovation isn't something that's about doing new things. It's also sometimes about rediscovering something that's old. And in Australia, we're privileged to have the planet's oldest living continuous culture. Um, and I think we have a lot to learn from uh, Aboriginal culture. So thank you, Tegan, very much for that. Welcome to country. Um, I'd like to talk briefly today at the opening of this showcase event, the first um, event of the social capital residencies and I guess the second event of the relaunch thinkers program after we had our launch a little while ago at the wine center um, to talk a little bit about the social economy um, and these social capital residencies but before that I just tell you a little bit about the Don Dunstan Foundation who's taken over the thinkers program um, so the Don Dunstan Foundation was established in 1999 by Don Dunstan himself before he passed away and our mission is to inspire action for a fairer world we're supported by the University of Adelaide and by Flinders University with some support from the South Australian Government and we focus on five key areas. Mental health, uh, which we did a big event on recently, the AdMental. Uh, homelessness, which we're doing some work in trying to end rough sleeping homelessness in the Ida City. Uh, and Aboriginal Economic Development and Reconciliation, where we have some events coming up in Reconciliation Week and there's some flyers on your table about um, that as we recognise 50 years since the 1967 referendum. Uh, we're doing some work on migration with the Committee for Adelaide to really bring together the, the business community who is, who is seeking to drive population growth in South Australia and the multicultural communities who are seeking to continue to build on the great multicultural project that we have endeavoured upon in Australia and to bring those two things together to see how we could work together on that. Um, and the final area that we're focused on is enhancing community development and participation. And that brings us to today with the social capital residencies and the relaunch thinkers program. And so if you take two messages out of today's event, I'd hope they're these things. First, that our economic future as a state lies in the growth of the social economy, that this is big business, this is serious business, and there are opportunities there. And second, that we're already leaders in this field, that we have a claim on this space. So our economy is in transition, and today you'll hear from Matthew Winefield, uh, economist from the Department of Premier and Cabinet, who will tell us a little bit more, more about the changing nature of our economy and the role of the social economy in it. Um, some of the biggest corp companies in South Australia uh, are not-for-profits, measured on their turnover or on employment, uh, on employment outcomes. And so this is a big area. The single largest employment opportunity for people in Northern Adelaide will be the National Disability Insurance Scheme. So the social economy is serious business. And if you take an analysis of that across the world, um, uh, health and education by themselves account for more than 20% of employment in most advanced countries. Um, there's every reason to think that will continue to grow. And that is larger than almost every other industrial sector combined. And with that will grow with increasing changes in medical science and with the steady growth of higher education. The number of jobs in the retail, the food, the cultural and recreation sectors make up another 20% of employment. Services to firms, accounting, design, data processing, marketing, communications take up another 20%. If you add in another 10% worth of government administration, you reach 70% of employment in all advanced economies outside what we traditionally see as industry. Yet these parts of the economy aren't sectors that are traditionally seen themselves as an industry. They're the welfare sector, they're disability, they're the cultural sector. And I make this point not to ignore the intrinsic values that are in art and in education, um, the inherent value in these things must be remembered and protected, perhaps now more than ever. But that should not stop us from recognising the economic value that these sectors bring to our state and to our communities. They have employment growth, they have huge growth employment, they have huge employment growth opportunities. 
Um, and now, of course, the growth of the social economy needs to see the pie grow, not just to see it redistributed. And so how do we do that? Well, that's what Alison's here to work through, to help us work through those sorts of issues. To see how we can go, Alison will talk about concepts such as inclusive innovation, how we're using innovation to help drive inclusive growth. And through her time here, Alison will help us to focus on the breaking down of the silos between the corporate or the traditional innovation and business innovation sectors and the social innovation sectors to, to grow their social economy and to use business model innovation to do that. In particular, she will help us to inspire and work with small, medium and large businesses and other organisations to improve their social impact. So if we are to grow the pie in South Australia, we need to unlock new forms of investment as well. And so we'll be working at the concept of impact innovation and how do we get impact investment um, from around the world to invest in the ventures and the, and the efforts we're taking here in South Australia. To help bring social innovations to scale by developing an ecosystem that supports investment ready social ventures, social enterprises, cooperatives, B Corp certified companies, all of these business models. So Alison will talk more about these things and more over the course of the next three weeks. And exploring these issues is core to what the residency is about. So if social economy is serious business, if there are big opportunities there, there's one other point that I'd like to make, and that, that is we are already leaders in this space, and that we are best placed to take advantage of the opportunities here. We were, as a province, as a colony, founded on the premise of creating a better society. The colony of South Australia was established by a bunch of dreamers escaping from industrial England, wanting to carve out a place for themselves in the world that was not just a dumping ground for convicts, but was a place free of religious persecution where we could seek to make a better society. That's what we were founded, and throughout our history, you can see that reflected in our achievements. In 1876, Adelaide University, the, the university that supports the Dunstan Foundation, was the first to accept women. As a result of public sector innovation, which I think is important given IPA have organised today's event, um, they ran a challenge in 1876 to deal with one of the greatest issues at the time, and out of that public sector driven challenge became the stump jump plough, which was a huge innovation that Australia led. That came out of South Australia. Women were given the, vote, the right to vote and stand for parliament in South Australia. An Aboriginal man, David Unipon, was amongst the first um, to what well, was the first person to create a revolutionary shearing machine that was the, bod the modern basis of uh, electrical shears that were used in, um, for wool. And he's now on the $50 note, a South Australian Aboriginal man. Um, we invented the Stobie Pole, where the first state to festival to, uh, where we're the first place to have an Adelaide festival, uh, the first of its kind in the world. Um, we were the first to have cask wine sold in Renmark. Um, we were the first place to have a pedestrian mall that Alison and I walked through on the way here. Uh, Don Dunstan was um, the first person to recognise Aboriginal land rights in Australia. Um, we had the first governor, female Governor General anywhere in the world um, here, at, sorry, so the first female Governor General in Australia, Dame Roma Mitchell. And with the appointment of Hugh Van Ley recently, we have the first Vietnamese born vice regal appointment anywhere in the world. There are so many more achievements that we've had, that we've done. Um, we were here today about more of those. Uh, we are a place where you can come and test new ideas. Um, we are small enough to try those things without um, the risks of failure being too high, and we're big enough to test them at scale. So we're a great place to do those things. That's why 3G mobile technology was first trialled here. That's why um, KFC first trialled the Zynga Burger here. Um, so there's, you know, maybe that's not leading to the better society, but it, is, it does show that we were... Uh, one of those leaders to test those sorts of things. So that has happened throughout our history. We've had inspirational ideas, inspirational innovations. We've had inspirational leaders. So Thomas Playford expanded the housing trust here in South Australia. Don Dunstan changed the view of South Australia amongst ourselves and, and others for how they saw us. So we are an innovative and we are a prosperous and we are an industrious people and we always have been. And so with the social economy being a massive opportunity, um, we are potentially those who can lead the way in, in taking a corner of that market. And so that's what the aim of these residencies is, to build on South Australia's firming purpose, to be a better society while addressing our most contemporary need, job creation. And the ultimate purpose, and hence the name of the social capital residencies, is for South Australia to be known as, the, as well known for social innovation, as Geneva is diplomacy, as the Tamworth is for country music. We want Australia to be truly the social capital. We want South Australia to be truly the social capital of Australia. So as I said, today's showcase is an, event, is an opportunity to demonstrate all of that. And we have some great speakers with us today, and we'll go through those shortly. But before I introduce our first speaker, can I just encourage you to get involved in these social capital residencies that we'll be hosting over the next three weeks?
Uh, Alison will be doing a series of roundtables, industry roundtables, meetings, um, presentations. Uh, the first public event outside of today's event is being organised by the Now Leadership Academy, and that's this Thursday at the Town Hall. I encourage you to get involved. Uh, or there's a Social Impact Measurement Networks event next Thursday, or we're having um, to come and find out what Alison's thoughts are and, and the first conclusions that she's come to in a big public oration um, on the 17th of May at Adelaide Uni. And if you're not already a partner in these residencies, I encourage you to consider do so and to speak to one of the Dunstan Foundation team that are here. But without further ado, can I introduce Matthew Winefield, who's going to speak to us about, uh, give us a briefing on the, the state of the South Australian economy and the opportunities in the social economy. Matthew's an economist from DPC. Um, he uh, was pivotal in the founding of this whole process um, with some briefings that he provided to the Premier for who I used to work for and when this process started. Uh, and he's an incredibly intelligent and passionate man who's done a lot of work in this space. Uh, he led a number of the, um, he led the work of South Australia's first social impact bond to address homelessness. Uh, he's committed to making better use of government data and evaluating social programs. So Matthew, can I please invite you to the stage?